Good day, everybody. This is Amber with Omi, and I am going to take you through making these adorable strawberry purses today. They are absolutely cute. I actually use my Glowforge as well as some sewing with this, and I am doing it all from scratch. So let's go ahead and get started. I hate the long introductions. So with these purses, in the very beginning, we're going to go ahead and use our Glowforge and we are cutting out an SVG of the state of Louisiana. Then we are going to paint one red and one white for these two particular purses. Now, obviously, you can use any one you want. I love the acrylic paint that has the fingernail polish type tip rather than the spongy tip. It's just much easier to get through and much easier to clean because you don't have to. So those are fantastic ones to use. And I'll put the links down in the bottom of the uh, description. So I've got a red one and I've got a white one. I've also got a five inch strap that I use. You can look up straps and how to build straps on YouTube. But this is a simple five inch strap that is made from strap material and circled with some um, cute little pink and white pinstriped um, seersucker material. Now I'm also going to use an eight by 10 and a half piece of strawberry fabric for the back of the purse. And what I'm going to do is use also three smaller sections for the front. And these three smaller sections are four inches a piece until I start putting them together. Now I'm going to flip them upside down back and forth to see what they look like up next to each other before I start sewing because obviously I want to pick the perfect pattern match up next to them. Now remember there's going to be a seam between them so don't try to line these up exactly or else you'll drive yourself nuts. Just put them in a place that you've got some darker colors and some lighter colors together and I flip this one around a bit before I get what I like anyway. So I've got my pinstriped or seersucker type material there, and it's about two and a half inches from the bottom so that I can put my fingers underneath it when I'm ready to carry this purse. And like I said, five inch strap, four inch section in the middle, and that'll give you plenty of room to work with and make some mistakes if you need to, right? So I'm doing some flipping here because I like that darker strawberry in the middle above the seersucker to give it some nice contrast. And then what I'm gonna do is take that right panel and I'm going to flip it over on the middle section there and give it a nice sew down the side so that I can sew the strap in. Then I'm gonna flip it open and I'm gonna give it a top stitch down, down the front. And I am on the other side going to do the exact same thing. So the top, open it up, top stitch. So I'll meet you back from the sewing machine. You don't want to watch me sew, it's boring. So now I've got a nice little top stitch going for both of those guys. And I can put my hand through that middle section there. And what I want to do is go ahead and clean this up because I did some sloppy cutting on this guy. So again, what we're looking for is eight inches by about 10 and a half inches and go ahead and give it a nice strong straight cut across the top and across the bottom because we're going to be adding the back section now. Oh, look how nice. I love cutting fabric. It's so therapeutic. And another thing that you want to make sure that you're doing here, pro tip, is to make sure that the right panel and the left panel are exactly the same size so that that middle section is in the middle and you don't have a wonky looking strap in the middle. Nobody wants that. Because nobody will be able to tell except for you and it'll irritate the mess out of you. But you definitely want it down the middle. So give it a good measure from both sides. For this one, we've got about three and a quarter inches from that middle section. So measure from your seams across and then add that back section there, pretty sides together again, and then give it a good clean snip on the sides to make sure that those are the same. And remember to respect the middle section of that strap. So make sure that that strap is in the middle before you start cutting the sides of it so that everything stays together. Give it a good snip here. Ah, oh, therapy, therapy. 
Think about all the ugly things in your life and just cut them off. Doesn't that feel good? Mm. So nice. Love it. All right. And make sure that you are sewing the bottom and you want to give it a little stitch to put these two things together and take it to your machine and sew that little bottom section there. But before you do that, we definitely want to clean it up. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So clean it up. Sew that little bottom section, the one closest to the strap at the bottom. See, there I go, double checking to make sure that those seams are both the same size away. And that way you make sure that your strap is in the middle. Measure from the seams, okay guys? Very, very important to measure from those seams to the sides to make sure that the same size is there because then your strap is definitely in the middle. And we're gonna sew across the bottom of this guy and we'll be back in just a second. Okay, so it's nice and open and we want to iron down that middle seam so it's nice and flat because what we're gonna do here is we are going to put a piece of fusible fleece in between this one and our inner lining. So we are going to cut a piece of fusible fleece in the middle and we are going to cut a piece of lining and we're going to fuse it all together with an iron. And again, I'm not gonna show you that because that's boring, but you see here on the other end where I've got the fusible fleece in between, there's a piece of lining on the back Obviously, the pretty side is facing outside, and what we have is a nice piece of fabric, and what I'm going to do, again, is cut that to make sure that it's nice and even across. Wait until you see the inside fabric. There's a big reveal in just a second. It's so cool looking. It's a really nice piece, but I'm going to do the zipper first. So again, I'm cleaning up my edges here, making sure that I've got a nice uh, straight side here on both sides of this so that if I only have a sewing machine, and we'll talk about that in just a second, that it still looks really nice on the inside of my bag. I'm gonna use a serger to finish this guy up, so I'll show you how that looks in a second. But for, the, for right now, what I want you to do is make sure that those sides are nice and perfect on, on all edges. Everything is the same size. And now we're gonna add our zipper sandwich here, right? So zipper goes face down at the top. You sew the, the top of that zipper and then we're gonna flip it upside down and we're gonna top stitch that zipper in place. And then we're gonna fold up the bottom and there's your liner right there. There it is, there's your reveal right there. Oh, look at that, beautiful, beautiful. Nice little um, coordinating and contrasting material at the same time. Now, after you, of course, sew it and stop, top stitch that side down as well, we are going to zip that thing together. Whoops, sorry. I'm going to top stitch that, right? Top stitch first, top stitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, top stitch. There we go. All right, so we've top stitched both sides so that the zipper is nice and ready to go. And you're going to halfway pull that zipper together. And then we're gonna sew both sides of that. So your bottom is intact already. You're gonna side, you're gonna sew both sides of that together so that that bag has a nice and sturdy edge. If you're only sewing, one of the things that I would suggest is to give it a, give it a nice straight stitch and then go back over it with a uh, zigzag as well on maybe the outside of the stitch to give it some extra heft on the sides. But what I'm gonna do is use a serger but I always use a straight stitch first to give it a little bit of strength on the inside. And it's also a nice clean place where I can put my serger stitch on the outsides of these stitches and it doesn't look like it's opening up. It stays nice and closed. So before I go over to my serger though, I'm gonna cut off the ends of these zippers so that I get a nice clean line when I go over there. So I've surged here, okay? and. I've put the sides on, they look nice and clean. There's no raw edges anywhere, which I love. And it gives the bag some sturdiness so that if you start pulling it, or um, if you're not able, if you're, uh, if you're rough on your bags, it just gives a nice um, tough side to those bags so that they don't pull apart. 
And you remember how I'd halfway pulled that zipper? Now I can turn this guy inside out and see what I have. And this is always my favorite part because it's the end, right? So you're turning this guy inside out. Come on, Amber. Turn it. There you go. There you go. All right. We're turning it inside out. Make sure that you poke those corners out real well. I like to use chopsticks here. This one actually pokes out really nicely with just using my finger, but sometimes I get a pair of chopsticks, the end of them, and I poke them out. Chopsticks are nice and gentle on bags, so I like using chopsticks if um, if your fingers aren't doing the job. This one actually does it with the fingers, though, so we're good with, here, with this guy. Give you a nice little angle corner on the side, and zip that guy up. Doesn't that look nice? Now the great thing about it is you can put your fingers down in the bottom and you can carry it around. It's got a nice sturdy side for you. Now you don't have to use the, sh the strap if you don't want to. You just carry it as normal, right? But this gives you a little bit of, um, of stability with your uh, clutch if you want to carry it around places and, and, and just have a little extra strap there. Poke out those zipper corners really nicely as well so that they lay pretty at the top and you have plenty of room on the inside of your uh, clutch right so zip it up check it out and don't you just love to touch fabric after you're done with it of course you do everybody does it's so nice and soft especially if you've got that quilting fleece on the inside and again it's that fusible iron-on fleece I'll put it down in the links below as well so you're just loving that there you go it looks so nice get rid of all of those zippers you don't need them and guys pro tip if you use the long zippers it's easier to top stitch so um, use a zipper that's longer than what you need for these guys so that when you're top stitching those zippers you don't get caught in the edges there so really nice look at that beautiful inside liner I love that looks so good nice and farm like Make sure you come to the Strawberry Festival April 8th through 10th. You definitely want to do that in downtown Ponchatoula. We can't wait. Now we're adding that Louisiana with the, with the leather and suede glue. And you're just going to lather it up on the back. Make sure you use, I use my fingers and spread it out around the corners because we want to hit the corners of this and make sure that it stays down nice and sturdy. And then you put something heavy on the top of it. I'm just using my tape wheel here on the top of mine I'll pull it out uh, or pull it off of it you know an hour or two after I've put it on and make sure all of those edges are kind of staying down and then obviously I put it back on and leave it for a little while and make sure it stays flat I used the white one with my seersucker and then I came back and did a red strap on my second one with the Louisiana in red at the top. So these came out really, really nice. I'm really proud of them. And one of the things that I do want to remind you guys of is that this is a really easy thing to do. You can get these done in about 15 or 20 minutes a piece once you get rolling, especially if you cut your fabric first and it's all ready to go. The main thing that you want to do is just make sure that you always have those straight cuts. You'll get measurements from from folks and I've done this before where I've looked at patterns and I've got to be the 8 by 10 then all of a sudden stuff starts shifting after you um, iron on your fleece and things like that one of the tricks that I like to do is actually do my fabric first my outside fabric that front piece with the three panels and then the back and then I cut my inside uh, fleece the fusible fleece as well as the lining just a little bit bigger than that it gives me a little bit of give in case things go weird during the ironing process I get a little maybe catty cornered or something and then I just go back in and I clip those edges and make them nice and straight before I sew um, all the bag together so cutting is important staying on top of cutting is important Measuring is really important in the beginning. You'll hear a lot of sewers say that you measure first and you know you measure twice and you cut once. For me, I measure a couple of times and then anything else I add, I measure a little bit bigger and then I cut. Because if you try to stay with the other cuts, you're gonna give yourself some 
fits because we have this thing called human error with us. So if you cut the additional, if you cut the first one, the size that you wanted, or maybe a little bit bigger, and then you cut the other ones and give yourself a little bit of room for error, that always helps out. So I'm certainly a person who needs room for error. And I appreciate your time today. Thank you for joining me. Next week, we're going to be making garden flags. I'm going to be jumping back on my embroidery machine. I've got a brother um, dream machine that I'm going to be cutting, that I'm going to be using to embroider some Mardi Gras flags. So that'll be nice and fun. And maybe some other flags as well. And I'll show you some of the ones that have come off machine, my machine. And I appreciate any of your comments. Make sure that you you ask for some suggestions or make some suggestions to me if you find a better way to do this. I would love to know what you guys are doing and and see that it's something that maybe I can add as well. So help me out too as we're going through all of this stuff. Let's mix some of this media together. Use your Glowforge with your sewing and show me what you've got. Thanks guys. I appreciate you. See you next week.